Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this video, I'm taking a look at UiPress. UiPress is a toolbox plugin for customizing and extending the WordPress admin. There are a large number of individual utility plugins for this purpose, but UiPress brings the features of several of these together in one. I recently did a walkthrough of WP Adminify, another admin toolbox plugin, and there were questions about how it compares to UiPress. So here's a UiPress walkthrough. I'll create a post in the dynamic WordPress group where we can discuss a comparison. So feel free to join that group if you're not already a member. But here I'm gonna focus on UiPress, which I think deserves a look on its own merits. If you like the video, please subscribe. It helps to spread the word about the channel. Okay, so here's the website for UiPress. And you can see it has a number of features. There is a documentation area here. So you see like there are three docs here, three docs there. I didn't see a YouTube channel. If we look at the pricing, they have yearly, monthly, lifetime, and light, which is I think the free version. This is the yearly, $49 for a single site, $199 for 200 or $499 for unlimited. If we check out Lifetime, it's $599 for 200 sites or $999 for unlimited sites. I have a testing site here with a free cadence theme. If we go to the plugin area, it's the same starter site. You know, I've got UiPress installed but not activated, so I'm going to activate it now. Okay, and so when you activate UiPress, then we get their theme. See a new version available. Okay, so this is their default light theme, I guess. When you install UiPress, you get your settings here. UiPress settings, UiPress styles, and menu creator. Let's go to settings and I'll enter the license key. Okay, I added the license. I'm going to refresh the page. Okay, and now we have an extra admin menu item, admin pages. We'll come back and look at that in a few minutes. Let's start seeing what kind of style customizations we can go and look at. Let's turn on dark mode, save settings. Okay, I guess that's an Ajax save there. I'm gonna refresh. Okay, so this is their dark mode. I mean, it's a matter of personal taste, but kind of like this a little better. So you can rename, so this would be your white label options. Okay, you can change the footer text. So those are the general settings here. Then let's go to themes. So we can disable the theming module. We can disable it for user and roles. And then the other kind of theming type feature here is in the admin menu, UI press styles. Here you can set the colors for different parts of the site. So you have global, text color, button color for different kinds of buttons menu colors, toolbar colors, card colors, and login colors. Okay, so you can kind of create your own type theme. And there's the option also to import and export your choices. There's this library icon here for theme library. Okay, and so here you can download from their website and import different pre-designed themes. So that's nice. So these themes look attractive. So that's a nice feature there. So if we go back to settings, here is login. Okay, so you can disable the login module. You can disable dark mode, the language selector, upload your logo for the login, and a background for the login. Okay, so this is much less extensive. It might be enough for you. Honestly, for me, switching the logo has usually been enough, but sometimes it's nice to have a custom background. 
If we go and take a look at the menu creator, you can disable it here or we can go into the menu creator. With UI Press, you create menus. And so we have all of the menu items we have now listed here and then the menu settings over here. Okay, so I'm gonna call this, let's create like, you know, the default admin menu, which is, I want to be everything here. And so you have inclusive or exclusive for setting display rules. Inclusive means that the menu will load for all users and roles listed. And exclusive means it'll load for every user except those users and roles. Okay, so I'm going to go and do admin. So we have administrator and super admin. I'll add both. I just want to basically duplicate everything here except move this under settings. When you hover over the items here, you get a plus sign to add it. So that goes into the preview. That goes into the preview. Now I wonder, see there's nothing under there. So I wonder, do I need to copy everything over individually? So if that's the case, then it would be nice to have an option to select all. But let's try doing it without copying them first. And then if we need to, we'll come back and edit it. I've got all the menu items copied over. And now I'm going to open. See, it did copy all these. And let's see if we can just drag this down here. All right, awesome, that's good. There's a little trash can here if you wanna remove things. Okay, so this is looking good. We've got these submenus. So for some reason these didn't get copied over. I'm gonna just go ahead and do it. There's that one. And then I'll copy into content the posts. Media, Pages, and Books. Okay. Good, we've got that there. So now I'm going to save. And it tells us here that it's saved. Let's go out. Ooh. All right. Now the all-in-one WP migration item isn't showing here but it is showing down there. Okay, so we were able to uh, move a menu item. Now that we have one created, we get the list here. We can disable it, edit, duplicate, export, delete. So the next one we could duplicate to get kind of a head start, I guess. Let's see, if we click an individual menu item, then we get a pop-up here where we can change the name, we can change the link, the URL, we can add custom classes, open in a new tab and choose an icon. A cool thing with this is you can add your own separator and custom link. If you have a support site or something, you could add a link here to your own support site as a menu item in if that's what you wanted to do. Or if you have several sites together, maybe you have some subdomains for a course or some other feature you could put a link for that here in the admin. That's the menu creator. This is a nice feature of UI Press. Let's go back to the settings and see what other features there are. All right, now here's the toolbar. You can disable the toolbar module. So I guess that means, yeah, the top bar does look different. You can disable it for users and roles. You can hide parts of it here. There are options here for things to show and hide, but I don't see an option for adding your own item. So that would be nice. This is changed to kind of a slide out menu here if you want to create something. So that's interesting. And that's kind of user settings. So that's interesting. All right, that's the toolbar. There's a folder option. And if we go to content and media, all right, that's kind of attractive. And here then you can add folders. 
folder name and you can give it a color and you can create it and then you can copy your images over. So that's kind of the folder feature. See, I think there are a couple more things here. There's an advanced section here and you can choose who gets to see it. You can enqueue scripts and styles and add your own CSS and JavaScript and HTML. That's nice. Then admin pages. Let's take a look at that. You can disable the module and you can change the slug and see who can edit and create them and control who can see them. That's the settings for that. If we want to actually create an admin page, then we go to the menu here and we can add new. Okay, so I'll give it a title. And I'm just gonna grab some dummy content. Okay, now if we had a page builder installed like Elementor or Beaver Builder, we'd see the little button up here to edit with the page builder. So we could use a page builder to create this page. But I'm just going to use Gutenberg here. Now here we can choose an icon. So I'll pick this one. Then there's an option here to manually add to menu, but I'm just going to leave this as is. We'll publish it. <clears throat> now we don't see anything showing here. Let's go to our menu creator. See if we can add it to a top level. And here it is here. Okay, so I'm going to add it. Then let's move it up here maybe and we'll save and then let's go out and here's our test admin page I don't see the icon there not sure why that is can't find it let's see if we need to refresh permalinks maybe now let's try going to it Yep, there it is in all of its beauty. Okay, let's go back to the UI press settings. There is the option for a content page. And you can, you know, disable it, control who can see it. But when you click on content here, rather than, you know, open up and go to individual host types, then you get a long list of all of your media and posts and you can sort it into folders. It's not something I'd wanna use, but maybe depending on the type of content your site has, it might be useful. Okay, there's an overview page, which is your welcome screen. You can customize that also. Let's see what that looks like if that's changed. So here you can import a template or enter edit mode. So let's try importing the default template. Site of the day, uh, quote of the day, site health, recent comments, recently published. Okay, so we're going to need to connect Google there, but that can be useful. That's the overview page option. So we've done a walkthrough of many of the features of UI Press, and I think at this point you probably have a good feeling for what it is and what it brings to the table. Now for some discussion and conclusions. I had a good experience using UI Press. I thought the admin theme customizations were very nice and the look was consistent. I could see using the dark mode on a site as a default look. The menu creator also worked very well. It was full featured and I was able to move menu items up or down levels, which is nice for cleaning up what could sometimes become a long list of admin menu items. The folders feature is nice for managing the media library and the ability to put some cards on the overview page to show Google Analytics reports would also be useful. The login page customization options would probably be sufficient for me, but they're pretty bare bones. UI Press has an option for a content page, and one long content page didn't make much sense to me, and neither really do folders for post pages and post types, though perhaps some people have a use for those. So I would probably turn those features off. I didn't really run into any issues except the missing icon when I moved a custom admin page out to the top level. 
I reached out to support a couple of times while testing UI Press. When I didn't know how something worked, I left a question in the chat and got a response in a reasonable time frame. Overall, I'm pretty happy with UI Press. It does not have as many features as you might find elsewhere, but the features it does have are well polished. So that's the walkthrough of UI Press. There's a text version of the video available on the WebTNG website, along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. I hope you found the video useful. Thank you for watching.